Hi, this is Jason Juritich, and in this video we're going to see how to make dependent dynamic drop-down lists in Google Spreadsheets. Typically in Excel, the only thing you'd have to do to make these types of lists would be to put the equals indirect function in, but this does not work in Google Spreadsheets, unfortunately. So we had to devise a way of making it so that you could actually have these dependent drop-down sheets in Google Spreadsheets. So just to show you very quickly that they actually do work, I am just on a typical spreadsheet here on sheet number one. If I go here, I can choose a group and then automatically this will give me a sub selection. And if I go here and I go to B, this will automatically change to the list in B and this will change to list here. If I decide to, for example, bring these drop down lists further, then they will all change and will give me the same. If I change this one, for example, now to A, then this one will change to A. And this one will also change to A. And as you can see, you can vary them in such a way that they give you the possibilities down here. I can go to C. Here I can go to C. And here I can go to C. So again, if I'm over here and I go back over, you're going to see that it's in C. So they'd be switched. Why? Because these are totally dependent upon these and do not go back to the original unless you choose the first one. So now it will go to B. And this will go to B. So this is the closest we've gotten to a dynamic drop-down list. Uh, there could be an easier way of doing this, but I'm going to show you the way that a couple of other people have shown me. And it, again, is a rather complex system, but at least it works. So the thing we had to do first was to create our lists. And here we have group, which is the normal, the first set right here. Then we have our subgroups. And as you can see, this AAA here goes here and then the subgroup under that, the corresponding subgroup here, and the corresponding subgroup here. And then obviously we had to take each one of these, put them as a group, and have their own subgroups. So you have to make a whole list of these before you can actually do the drop-down list over there. But as long as you have this in whatever sheet within the document itself, you're fine. And then afterwards, what you have to do is make what you call ranges. So here, I'm not going to do them all, I'm just going to show you what we did. That basically, for example, it's if you choose, for example, to add a range, you first give it the name, and here we have to give it the name AAA, and then here you choose the selection of cells which correspond to that range. So for example, here we're going to cancel this, if we go up, down here it says group, here it says group, and then it says sheet 2, E4 to E6. So the group name is here, it gives me that, and then here on AAA, it will say sheet 2, F4 to F6, and these will come down. So after we have made our list, and after we made, made all of our ranges, then what we have to do is do a couple of things that are Rather a little bit complicated, but will allow us to have the dynamic drop-down list. Over here, we have something that's called offset. And this offset is looking for something that's on sheet number one, which will allow it to give us this. And then over here, we have an array formula, which simply all it does is say that if BBBB is here, which we have here, then you will bring in the range and you will expand it here. So as you can see, these three have been expanded here precisely because of the fact that we have put an array formula. So this part's actually pretty easy. Whatever corresponds here, you're gonna put your corresponding range here. For example, here it's BBB, and if we go over to BB1, B2, B3, come out here. So these two formulas are actually fairly easy. All you have to do is copy them and then you put the reference point. So here we have A1 stating that 
if in A1 we have a certain range, then in B2, going down, you will expand that range here. So all it does is grab these and put them here. So these two columns are actually fairly easy. The ones we have to understand a little bit better are these two offset ones, which are a little bit harder. So how do we get these offset things to work? Well, the first thing we have to do is come over here, and what we have here hidden is a column with a automatic timestamp. And what this does, it says, okay, whichever is the last edited cell selection is what we're going to use to stick here. So here it says offset sheet A1. You go over here, what's it going to tell me is that this here is A1, and so it's grabbing this. This was the last edited cell here, and so it's telling me that this is what's going to grab. So here, for example, if I go here and I choose this one, and I go to AAA, AAA, AAA. If I go over here, you're going to see that these have all changed because it's saying that the last one, okay, the last timestamp, which was in column D, corresponds to this addition here. And this is the same thing over here. Now, I think the only thing different is it's in B1. So we go over here. It's saying that after this one was edited, this one was edited here in B1, and so it puts B1 here and then corresponds to these here. So how do we get the, the connections here? Well, after the timestamps are done, which I'll show you last, these two columns here are simply put just drop-down lists that we made from sheet number two, meaning we grabbed these and made that a drop-down list here. So basically what I did was I first put this as a drop-down list. The only thing I do here is go to validation. I choose an item from a list. And then here, all I do is choose group, which was the name of the list that we made beforehand, save, and then this drop-down list comes here. And then this drop-down list, the only thing I do here is go to tools. Oops, sorry, data, validation. And here, item from list, I'm going to grab this, and then I go over here and say whatever comes out here is going to be put there. So I grab these three, and I say, okay, I press save. And then over here, what all this does is going to throw down that list there. And then this last one, obviously, is I do the same. I go data, validation, and I go over here from a list, down here from a, from a list, select this, go over here, and I choose this column here. And I press OK. And I press Save. And then I go back over here. And obviously what that does is it gives me the column over there. So what this is going to do is ultimately end if I choose A. Okay. This will come out as A. And this will come out as A. And if I choose C here, and these will come out as C. Well, in fact, I'm able to put it on it. C. And this guy will come out of C. Obviously, the timestamps are all changing at the same time. So these are the connections between these. So it's a rather complicated system, which goes back and forth between the two sheets to ultimately give you what this is doing. And this timestamp thing, the only thing I did was to hide it here so that it didn't bother the people who were changing the sheets here. So that's basically how you end up doing this. All you have to do is follow exactly what the formulas are here so that you can coincide it with what's on this sheet. So the final thing I'm going to show you now is the most complicated part, maybe, which is how to get the automatic timestamp in here so that the offset here has the data to know who is being edited last. So we go over here, and what we do here is we're going to have to go into Tools. And here in Tools, we have to go into Script Editor. Now, in Script Editor, I already have this here, but let's presuppose it's not. So grab this, take it out. What you're going to do is when you open this up, it's going to say Untitled here, and you can title it whatever you want. And it's going to have a code over here, and it's going to have nothing. If it does have something, you just get rid of it. And then basically what you do is you have to put in this code here for it to work. Now, the important thing here is the following. Let's just say you just copy this in here. Um, hopefully we'll be able to give you guys a link to where you can get this, but if not, you just have to be very careful on how you put it in. 
All you do is you follow this, it goes to 1 through 20, and you put exactly what you have here into that. And here there's no spaces, as you can see, and you just put function, space, on edit, and you just follow each thing here. As you can see here, this is totally blank, so you don't need any spaces here, from what I understand, but here they have one, two actually, and then they have two on each of these lines, and then they have the following, slash slash settings, and then you have two spaces here, var, a space, t-sheet, a space, and then you have this type of thing here, semicolon, space, two var, and then you put all this stuff in here. You just have to follow exactly what's here. Just put pause in the video to make sure you can type this all in correctly if I can't give you a link. And once you have this exactly as it is, then the only three things that you have to change for your own spreadsheet is the following. This coincides with the sheet that you are going to put the automatic timestamp on. So in this case, it's sheet one of this dependent drop-down list that I have here. And then what do these mean? Here's the first one. It says leftmost column number you're monitoring mean this is A1, A is equal to 1. So this is going to be the first column, which is normally the A column. Second column, which is normally the B column. And in this case, we don't want this because obviously the last column we're monitoring is going to be the C column. So that's going to be 3. And then this column, which is the most important, is where the timestamp is going to go. So we're going to put column 4, which will coincide with the D column in that sense. So this is column A, 2, column C, with timestamp in column D. That's what these numbers translate into. So after we put the right sheet name in, and you can put spaces in here. If your sheet, has a, uh, sheet name has a space, you can put that in. It makes no difference. Once you put your sheet name in, once you say what the, what the initial column is, you can put this anywhere in the, in the spreadsheet. So if you want to start with column D and then finish with column F, you just put the coinciding numbers in there with the timestamp being after the columns you're analyzing. So as long as you put those columns in there, you should be fine. Then you just press save. Okay, it's going to save that. And then you, you press run. This is the run button here. You press run. Now, it's going to come out this. Don't worry about this at all. It makes no difference. It's still going to work fine. So you just press dismiss here. This guy is all done, ready to go. Then you press X here to close that dude. And the first time you grab this drop-down list, it's going to automatically change the time here, and the time stamp will come out. And it will start filling those out. And as soon as you start filling the rest of these out, the rest of the timestamps will come out, and then that will coincide with the rest of the information here. And that is basically how you finish off with this. Then we'll hide this guy. And then we have our dependent dynamic drop-down list. Again, I know the script stuff is a little bit complicated for most people. Probably this formula stuff is too. Don't worry about it. I also had a problem with all of this. I didn't quite get it at the beginning. Either way, if the explanation that I gave right now is not sufficient, just leave a comment below the video and I will either try to redo the video so that you guys can understand better or I'll answer the comments there within the same comments area in YouTube. So I hope this video has helped a little bit. Thank you very much.